We are given f of x and g of x and asked to determine and simplify f of x plus g of x, which means we need to add these two rational expressions. Notice how we do not have a common denominator and therefore the next step is going to be to factor the denominators so that we can determine the least common denominator. But notice how here the denominator of two x plus seven does not factor. Now for the denominator of two x squared plus nine x plus seven, the only common factor among all three terms is one, and therefore if this does factor, it will factor into two binomial factors, because the first term is two x squared, which is equal to two x times x. We have a two x and an x. We have a two x and an x in the first positions of the binomial factors. And then because the leading coefficient is not one, it's two, we now place the factors of seven in the second positions so that the sum of the inner and outer product is equal to positive nine x. Because the sum must be positive, we will use the positive factors of seven, which are one and seven. Let's try placing a plus seven with the two x and a plus one with the x. And now check the sum of the inner product and outer product. The inner product is seven x plus the outer product is two x, which does give us nine x, the middle term, we now know this is factored correctly. Now looking at the factors of the denominators, we should be able to recognize that the least common denominator is going to be the product of these two binomial factors. And because this rational expression does not have a factor of x plus one in the denominator, we multiply the numerator and denominator by x plus one to create an equivalent fraction with the denominator of the quantity two x plus seven times the quantity x plus one. Now that we have a common denominator, we can add the rational expressions. The denominator remains the same, and the numerator is now two x times the quantity x plus one plus the quantity 11 x plus 21. We now need to simplify the numerator, which means we will distribute two x here and then combine like terms. Two x times x is two x squared, and we have plus two x times one is two x, then we have plus 11 x plus 21. Now we combine like terms, two x plus 11 x is 13 x, and therefore the numerator is two x squared plus 13 x plus 21. We're not done yet though, we now need to factor the numerator and see if there are any common factors between the numerator and denominator that will simplify out. The only common factor among all three terms is one, and therefore if the numerator does factor, it will factor into two binomial factors, because the first term is two x squared, which is equal to two x times x. Let's place a two x here and an x here. Again, because the leading coefficient is not one, it's two, we now need to place the factors of positive 21 into the second positions, so that the sum of the inner product and outer product is equal to positive 13 x. Let's use the factors of three and seven for 21. Let's try placing the plus seven here and the plus three here. And now check the sum of the inner product and the outer product. The inner product is seven x plus the outer product is six x and seven x plus six x is 13 x and therefore this is factored correctly. And now notice we do have a common factor of two x plus seven between the numerator and denominator, and therefore this does simplify. Two x plus seven divided by two x plus seven simplifies the one, and therefore the simplified sum function is the quantity x plus three divided by the quantity x plus one. For the second part of this question, they ask us for the values of x 
that must be excluded from the domain of the sum function. We must exclude the values of x that make the denominator equal to zero because division by zero is undefined. But it is important that we use the sum function before we simplified it to determine the excluded values, which means we will use this form of the sum function to determine the excluded values. Let's do this on the next slide. Again, before we simplify out the common factor of 2x plus 7, we will now determine the values of x that make the denominator equal to zero because we must exclude these values because division by zero is undefined, which means we need to find the solutions of the quantity 2x plus 7 times the quantity x plus 1 equals zero. This product is equal to zero when 2x plus 7 is equal to zero or when x plus 1 is equal to zero. And now we solve for x. Here we subtract 7 and divide by 2, which gives us x equals negative 7 halves. Solving for x here, we subtract 1 on both sides, and we have x equals negative 1. So these are the two excluded values from the domain of the sum function, because if x is negative 7 halves or x equals negative 1, we would have division by 0, which is undefined. And we list those values here. Also, if we go back up to the original functions, Notice f of x would have a denominator of zero when x is equal to negative seven halves, which is another reason why negative seven halves must be excluded. And we also now know the factored form of the denominator of g of x is the quantity two x plus seven times the quantity x plus one. Notice both of these excluded values would make the denominator of g of x zero, once again giving us division by zero, which is undefined. I hope you found this helpful.